Hey friends, Sarah Boston Kimber here with the Counseling Hub and I want to take a minute and talk about anxiety. More specifically, I want to talk about cures for anxiety and notice I put that in quotation marks because there's not a cure for anxiety. So I, I, I know I've talked about this in other videos so forgive me if I'm just repeating myself but anxiety is not just caused by any one specific thing. So um, it, it's very individual in terms of what set, I'm going to say sets people off, but I don't mean like sets off an anxiety attack. I mean what, um, I mean if you think about it on a continuum, and on that continuum right in, this is the, my pinky is the end of the continuum, this is the threshold for where anxiety manifests in your life. So we have a continuum of totally not anxious to exceedingly anxious and there's this point that normal people, normal, we'll say people with who don't experience anxiety, maybe kind of, they, they're they sliding up and down the scale because everybody has some level of anxiety. But once we cross this threshold of, holy shit, it's, it's influencing my daily life, it's influencing my interactions, my relationships, um, where I go, how I exist, in, it's influencing who I am, then it becomes distressing for people and the distressing piece is what I'm interested in. So how does this show up in your life and, and really what does it mean for you? Um, so I say there's not a cure and I, I think people get to their threshold, what I mean by it's set off by different things. I pe people reach that threshold for different reasons. So I, you know, some people are more genetically, like biologically predisposed to feeling anxiety that can be because of in utero stuff, it can be hereditary, it can be, um, some people it's more learned, so maybe they were, it just grew up in a really kind of high stress environment, so cortisol levels are always high, I don't really know, I mean, there's this biological component of it, of course there's the existential component, which is kind of questioning those unknown things in life, you know, isolation, death, meaning, etc. There's also, um, I said biological meaning like brain stuff, but I think there's also biological in terms of, oh, there's also physiological components of it as well in terms of sleep. I know that seems really, really silly and obvious, but sleep has something to do with it, can have something. It's not a cure-all, and I don't mean to say that, and I don't mean, that's not my intention, that's not my implication but it's a factor that can influence people's anxiety levels. Food is another one. Food, what are you eating? I mean, food can influence anxiety. I can tell you for sure, drugs as well, things like alcohol, things like even caffeine. So some people aren't influenced by caffeine, but I know there's some research out there that kind of says um, that there are folks, I think who are more prone to anxiety who experience anxiety after even uh, caffeine intake, for example. Um, so there's all these different factors and uh, also thoughts, duh, there's that whole cognitive piece. So uh, the, the way that you think and what you think about and getting stuck in thought loops, for example. Um, so that's really it. I think I, think I just want to say there's a bunch of different factors and rather than seeing anxiety as your foe or the thing you have to defeat and kill it. I hate it. You know, we don't have to do that. Anxiety is a part of life period. And it's, um, dare I say normal for a lot of people, but also a normal experience period just to kind of go through at various points throughout your life. And there's not a cure. I don't think there needs to be one. People are prone to feeling anxious. And for each of us individually, it's about figuring out how do we get our anxiety to a level that feels good and manageable for us? So if somebody who's really just kind of innately, genetically, biologically, etc., high strung and has a tendency to, you know, really has a tendency towards intense anxiety, they're probably not going to get to the level where they just feel cool as a cucumber all the time. They're like, no, it's chill. Everything's good. They're probably not really going to get to that place because that's just not who they are and that's okay. But again, importantly, it's it's whatever this person, whoever this high strong person is, and it might be you, it might be me, it might be anybody, right? 
It's about getting them to a level that they feel comfortable with. So we want them to come to a place and maybe it's past that threshold and maybe it's a little bit below it and maybe it's a little bit above it, whatever. It's about finding a place where they feel like, cool, I can be here. This thing, this anxiety isn't debilitating. I understand it more. I can manage it better. I'm good. Like I can do this. Um, and really empowering you. So somebody with anxiety, it's about like empowering you to live your life regardless of having this experience. So that's all I got. I hope you have a great day. If you have questions, comments, etc., leave them below. If you want to see more videos of the like, subscribe. If you have questions for me that you don't want to ask in a public forum, you can shoot me an email. Tara, T-A-R-A, at thecounselinghub.com. Otherwise, have a great day. See ya.